An announcement this month by the Obama administration makes it possible for same-sex couples to take medical leave to care for a spouse. It's the latest step towards marriage equality for everyone, with more work to be done. Kylar Broadus is on the board of directors for the National Black Justice Coalition and the Senior Public Policy Council for the Trans Civil Rights Project and the National Gay and Lesbian Task Force here in Washington, D.C. Thank you so much for joining us today to talk about two very important issues. Uh, first of all, tell me more about the National Black Justice Coalition. I'm glad to. We've been around for about 10 years and we work at the intersection of LGBT rights and race, bringing those two things together, uh, which has been a very needed and very instrumental uh, uh, effort uh, for racial and LGBT equality in the LGBT movement. Because so. there, there, there are some issues that just impact uh, African Americans in the LGBT community that don't impact others. Exactly. And we work uh, across those lines to educate in the African American community as well to say that we didn't lose our blackness mm -hmm. because we're LGBT and also in the LGBT movement that we have color uh, as well and somehow those things hadn't translated before and the National Black Justice Coalition I think is very instrumental uh, in doing that work and very necessary. And, and is really the leading civil rights arm for African American LGBT community. Yes it is. Okay. It is. Now, Thank you. Let's talk about this federal law. Um, so currently there is no federal law in place to adequately protect LGBT workers from employment discrimination, unlike for African Americans or for women. Is this correct? That's correct. Uh, we have the 1964 Civil Rights Act that protects based on race, uh, national origin, religion, uh, and uh, I always forget the protected classes, so let me make sure yeah. I cover them, mm -hmm. uh, sex and color, mm -hmm. uh, but we don't have one that protects on sex or gender identity, and that's what we need. And we need it at the federal level, because there are some states who have taken on this issue. For example, D.C. Um, protects workers since 1977 from discrimination based on sexual orientation, and then in 2006 they protected against uh, discrimination based on gender identity. So there are some states who are doing the right thing, but federally, right. that's where we need to make sure we're on the good foot. Exactly, because we miss millions of workers that are in states that have no protections. For example, my home state, which is Missouri, uh, where workers have no protections except for in a few alcoves that have local protections, as you point out. So uh, explain to me uh, what could happen in a work scenario uh, where an LGBT person is currently doing their job, what is a scenario that could pop up where they would actually need federal protection? Um, I always share, unfortunately, my own personal story because uh, I actually testified for the Employment Non-Discrimination Act in the U U.S. Senate uh, uh, last uh, a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, w that's what can happen. Employers can terminate you for no good reason. Uh, I still have my performance reviews, which are all stellar, but because I'm a transgender American, I was discriminated against just due to lack of understanding in the workplace. Um, not due to my work performance, but due to sheer lack of understanding and ignorance of what a transgender person is. And this happens every single day, it comes across my desk. Same thing with sexual orientation. We think we've gone so far with right. that, but that's not really true. I represent people, I'm, I'm a lawyer. People would come into my office and say, I'm not even LGBT, but I support people that are. I just had a sticker on my truck because I support my friend, right. and and uh, my employer saw it, and I was terminated. Oh my what God. recourse do I have? And I would tell them none, because there are no protections. And so when, when you were discriminated against, and you were terminated, I'm assuming, yes. a, and you were for certain as to why you were terminated? Oh, it was, it was evidently clear. You know, there were discussions about my haircut, how I dressed, how I was perceived, uh, it was a long, arduous process, and it, it culminated when I announced I was 
coming out as transgender, which was really no secret because I looked the same, dressed the same, I was the same person. It was just a matter of putting words on it mm -hmm. and announcing it. And then literally overnight, literally, after being at a company for almost eight years, I became lazy, shiftless. Oh, well, that just uh, sounds racist right untrustworthy. there. Untrustworthy. Uh -huh. You get those, and there all we those go. Things, and uh -huh. all those all those things, mm -hmm. and that's what happens to people. And it is we can't unpack all those oppressions. They're all tied in, and racism was a part of it because then I had a white female boss, mm -hmm. also that they assumed something was going on because she was supportive of my transition. Mm -hmm. That's all that was going on. And by the time both of us figured out what they had had assumed none of that was even going on as well you know uh, it was fine for male to male uh, supervision to go out to lunch and do those things but it wasn't fine for her to mentor me mm -hmm. uh, in that way either without there the, to be in the perception of there must have been something if, other if you don't mind me asking what year was this this was in the 90s um, and that's how I got into this business realizing that everything could be taken from me just like that and it was I lost my income I lost my life just like that and I got angry after I was depressed and my whole life mm -hmm. was taken from me and my income mm -hmm. uh, and that's devastating and that's why people do become mentally unstable mm -hmm. and that's why uh, economic security is very important in a country where people need to work Absolutely, and and let's talk about before we run we run out of time because your story is so interesting. Um, it came across the wires on Friday that um, it looks like the Obama administration is going to want the Labor Department to look at providing benefits, the same sorts of benefits that heterosexuals are provided when a spouse uh, is sick or they need to take leave. That they now want the same um, rights to be given to. LGBT members who are in same-sex uh, relationships. This is this is good. This is a good push forward. Right. A it's, good push in the right direction. It's so important. It's so important for all LGBT Americans who suffer economically. The perception is that LGBT Americans are wealthy. Uh, most, it's so true. Uh, yeah, most people have that perception, and particularly about. Uh, all LGBT Americans and black LGBT Americans, but that's so not true. Uh, black LGBT Americans, I want to get these stats in real mm -hmm. quickly, suffer economically. The uh, unemployment rate, uh, this was done in November by uh, the MAP project, mm -hmm. is 15% versus the 12% overall unemployment rate. Uh, uh, black LGBT Americans suffer s so economically, disparately, mm -hmm. it's unrealistically transgender Americans even worse. Right. Uh, the average uh, pay for transgender Amer black Americans is $10,000 per year if a, a person is employed. And we're talking about employment in shadow economies. Sh by shadow economies, I don't mean legal economies. Mm -hmm. I mean underground economies because we jo generally don't have a choice because people want to employ us because they make uh, uh, perceptions about us that just aren't true. I think that we want to make an effort in this country, uh, I'm praying so, to, to understand and to incorporate other people in our lives. And as I think about the LGBT portion of it, it's the T portion of it that oftentimes um, causes me a little more angst because I do feel like that um, transgendered uh, people take on a huge brunt of the anger and the just the the meanness that our society um, oftentimes um, well I, I guess I'm trying to say talk to me about being a transgendered person talk to me about the proper language that we need to use um, the things that we don't need to say you know don't call someone a her when the person is transitioning into tell me help me I want to be a better person with respect to um, th this community it's all about mutual respect is the bottom line you identify a person how they wish to be identified and I think it's about asking that person um, we have to get out of the idea that people fall into boxes that are neat little package boxes I tell transgender people that struggle with 
their identity. Go to a mall or an airport. You look and you just begin to discover that everybody looks transgender because mm -hmm. nobody fits in those neat little boxes that magazines or movies make us think of. And also, that's what everybody needs to do. And the fact is that we are all human beings and if we treat each other with respect. The second thing is education. There's tons of education out there now, unlike when I yes. first discovered this phenomena. I thought I was crazy, and I think most people do. It's like, it's nothing I chose, it's nothing I just thought I would do as How an occupation. How old were you when you decided you wanted to transition? I've always known that I was transgender. You know, I was fortunate uh, to have parents that understood they were much older, I was a late child in their life, and they understood we didn't have words, it was pre-internet. Uh, I remember my father never outing me when mm -hmm. I was five years old and would go on truck runs with him, and I have such anxiety about mm -hmm. being outed as a girl. I just knew before I could even speak, uh, and then going through, but I didn't do anything about it because there was no knowledge about it. But you had extraordinary parents. But I did have exceptional parents because they loved me no matter what. That's right. And that's what it takes Absolutely. also is exceptional parents and family standing up with their family and their child that's right. no matter what. And I did. And that's what makes me strong. And that's the difference between me and a lot of other people. Um, it allows me to advocate. Uh, I remember my mother sitting with me in church afraid other people were going to say something when I stood up in our Baptist church, which mm -hmm. denounced us last week. Yeah. Horrible, but yes. um, when she was still living and she just departed this plane about six months ago, mm -hmm. and I've lost both my parents, mm -hmm. but they were phenomenal people because they made me to do this. And I know we're running out of time, but I think education, respecting people, and families sticking with mm -hmm. their children and doing the education and not worrying about the outside world and organizations like the National Black Justice Coalition, the organization I work for, like the National Gay and Lesbian Task Force doing the work, the information is out there and having us come in and do trainings if you don't have the knowledge. But there's so much knowledge now, and even though we're visible, we haven't won the day yet. Yeah. There's so much to do, and having us do these spots, so because you know somebody that's transgender, sure. it's just whether they're visible or not. Absolutely. And most people don't know that I am when I come and do things mm -hmm. until I disclose, mm -hmm. and I am always do this mm -hmm. so that other people don't have to disclose so that we can stop this work. It's just like when we used to disclose about race and it was mm -hmm. in every paper, mm -hmm. that we stop this and stop this hate and violence. Kyle, our Brad brought us. Thank you so much for talking to us with the National Black Justice Coalition.